Unfortunately, it looks like they're a little slow start. No, they're there. Good morning, everybody. It's about nine or four. Um, Wednesday, April. Oh, Wednesday, thank you, April 6, uh, 2022. Uh, and I'd like to call the executive committee meeting uh, into order. <clears throat> Could you please call the roll? Bates? Here. Here. Berman? Berman here. Ford? Present. Here. Davis? Davis here. Gums? Gums here. <clears throat> Kenyon? Here. Caius? Caius present. Martin? Martin? Martin present. Molina? Molina present. Sanchez. Sanchez present. Strathman. Strathman here. Sergis. Sergis here. Tepe. Tepe here. Shepro. Shepro present. Here, you have a quorum. Oh, very good, thank you. Uh, Ms. Wittnicki, would you please do a say honor? Oh, sure. Yeah. Pledge allegiance to the flag, the flag of the United, United States, States of America. America. And to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. I have a motion and a second to approve the minutes of March 2nd, 2022. Berman move. I second. I have seconds. Are there any changes or amendments to these minutes? Seeing none, seeing none online. Um, Clerk, could you please call the roll? Bates. Bates, yes. Herman. Herman, yes. Ford. Ford, yes. Braz. Yes. Gums. Gums, yes. Kenyon. Yes. Caius. Caius, yes. Martin. Martin, yes. Molina. Molina, yes. Sanchez. Sanchez, yes. Strathman. Strathman, yes. Sturgis. Tepe. Tepe, yes. Davis. Davis, yes. Okay. The minutes are approved. Is there any public comment? I didn't hear my name called. I wasn't paying okay. attention. Mr. Shepherd. Mr. Shepherd. Thank you, Mr. Shepherd. Um, are there any public comments? And I don't see any online. All right, very good. Uh, we now are going to the monthly financials, with Mr. Onsick. <clears throat> One, I had provided for you a written copy of my report for this morning since I have several figures to reference and thought it would be easier for you to have it in writing in front of you. So, and these, these updates are the result of continuing to work on closing the year and as we're nearing the final figures. So my, the first page of my report is basically a recap of the revenues by department within the general fund. And the change that took place since the last time I reported this was basically it's just reduced by $10,000 as a result of a final one of the final adjustments we make. So overall, 
we came out ahead in terms of revenue uh, compared to budget by $11,337,000 in total. The second page then shows a recap of expenses by department. So it's comparing the budget to actual and then the resulting variances. I've sorted it in descending order for you. So you could see which areas um, yielded the, the most in terms of positive variance. They're listed at the top. So the total um, favorable expense variance for the fiscal year 2021 is $6.2 million. On my third page, um, I'm just recapping at the top, there are the total revenue variance of 11,337,000 plus the total expenditure variance of the 6.2 million yields a total excess revenue over expenditures for fiscal year 2021 of $17,537,999. Um, this is still not the very final figure. It's possible there may be some further adjustments, but whatever they would be at this point are likely to be very small. That section below this then where it says um, updated allocation of excess revenue over expenditures. Um, this, is, this hasn't changed. I just thought it would be handy for you to have it in one place with these other updates. Um, so the, the top portion shows what we originally allocated. Um, then we had that, uh, and that's that 500,000 to the public safety sales tax fund for sheriff's vehicles, and then 3.1 million each to the property tax freeze protection fund and capital fund. And then there were miscellaneous um, items that we put on reserve as a result of individual departments um, requesting the carryover savings for specific purposes. And then the, the bottom section is where we're taking care of allocating that additional um, revenue variance that was identified um, when, once revenue was near final. And that's moving, well, actually what this is indicating is that when we balanced the 2021 budget, we had originally thought we would need to use the 5.6, well, 5,660,000 and the 2.3 million um, dollars from the COVID payroll reimbursement fund in order to balance the budget. Be well, since we have come out so far ahead in terms <laughs> of the budget, we don't need to use those funds. So this is proposing that they be moved back to the COVID payroll reimbursement fund. And then on top of that, we still have an additional 1375000 to allocate back to the property tax freeze protection fund and capital fund to take care of that full $17,527,000 variance. So by moving all these things out of the general fund into the various other reserve funds, it prevents it from being absorbed into the general fund when we close the year. And so at this point, we have uh, like $10,000 remaining that would be absorbed. Um, and I'm just leaving that there for now um, in case there are other expenses that we identify that we have to post before closing the year. And if if that $10,000 remains, the very final thing I'll do, as I was authorized to do in the resolution that was previously um, approved by the board, is move that difference in, into the pro property tax freeze protection fund. I'll have an update on property tax revenue. I received the property tax computation report from the county clerk's extension office. And this is the final report that comes to us once all of the adjustments have been um, processed. Um, and what this indicates is that I, I had originally budgeted $550,000 of additional property tax revenue for new construction. Well, the final figures indicates that we'll have almost $12,000 more. So just, just a little bit more for new construction will be added um, to our revenue. But in addition, there's a brand new revenue source, which um, is, is new to me, not new to all of us, as a result of legislation that was passed this past August. Um, what this legislation does is it allows the county, um, well, actually it instructs the county to increase its tax levy by the amount of 
taxes that were refunded the previous year. So this way we're made whole because we the, the idea behind it is that the previous year we had budgeted a certain amount of tax levy, but then as a result of court rulings or, or whatever types of adjustments took place, there were refunds that were issued last year. So we did not re actually receive the full amount of property tax revenue. So last year, the amount that was refunded was $142,000. <laughs> And this was certified by the treasurer's office. So we're instructed to add this into this year's tax levy, which at this point is, is already done in terms of um, being calculated and then in, and in the system as far as the tax extension office is concerned. Um, and then from there, it'll go to the treasurer's office to actually issue the billing. So that would result in a total of $154,000 more in tax revenue than what we had budgeted. We also had some good news regarding riverboat proceeds. We received word from the Elgin Riverboat Casino that their annual contribution to us this year will be five, well, almost $5.4 million. Um, we only budgeted about $2 million because that's what we received last year. Um, this contribution represents seven and a half percent of the riverboats net operating revenue after they add back depreciation and contributions and they deduct their capital expenditures. So basically it's driven by their net operating revenue, which was greatly improved over last year. One of the things I've just finished um, for this year also was the calculation of lost revenue um, that is eligible from, for reimbursement for, from the ARPA fund. That amount is $657,000. And this, because it's coming so late in the year, it's really not really practical to try to fit it into adding it into the um, closing of fiscal year 2021. So this will be something that would be, we can still do, but it'll just be posted in 2022. But actually that's consistent with what we did for the revenue recoupment for 2020. We posted that in 2021. So it's just a year later. Um, and also we, we do not have the very final revenue figure. So we're, we're not able to post the final amount yet. And the reason why um, it's so small is because we did so well and compared to budget and in comparison to the base year of 2019. I also calculated the payroll reimbursement. Um, this is primarily for the public safety area. And these were, um, and then within that area, it's primarily the correctional officers who were dedicated to um, responding to COVID-19 within um, the adult correctional facility um, and maintaining um, an environment that would um, keep um, the detainees safe there from COVID and to handle COVID as necessary. So th their focus, more than 50% of their time was spent focused on those efforts, which is why they were eligible for reimbursement. So the total there is that 10,469,000. Um, there are also some um, small amounts of reimbursement that um, are going to be allocated back to various departments, um, but that leaves the bulk of it still available to be placed into the reserve um, as budgetary savings. <coughs> and then it, as I was completing these, the lost revenue and the payroll reimbursement for this past year. I then went on to try to provide estimates for the coming years so that it may be of possible help for the ARP committee. And so that takes us to the next slide, which I think might be slightly complicated, but so I'll try to, um, I try to present everything I could think of on one page. So maybe that made it worse for you, but that very first column, is what indicates um, how much we've either already calculated for revenue reimbursement. So that would be the 2020 and the 2021 figures. And then what we're estimating for 2022 and 2000, uh, 2022 and 2023. So that would bring a total of lost revenue potential reimbursements of almost $30 million. 
At the same time, I looked at um, payroll reimbursement. So according to the sheriff and his projections, he really sees it continuing in the same way going forward in terms of the number of personnel that will be dedicated um, to responding to COVID. And so I basically took their costs and increased them according to what we're anticipating to be increases um, for collective bargaining agreements. The reason for the jump between 2021 and 2022 is that 2021 figures still represent um, the cost of their wages um, before the collective bargaining agreement was reached. And so there's going to be retroactive payments that affect 2021, and those are not included in this figure. But this is all I was able to include at this point, um, because that's all we, we do have at this point, and that would be what I can legitimately say is eligible for reimbursement. But going forward then, I did factor in what I, I think is a reasonable estimate of what the, um, the costs will increase to going forward. And so there we have another almost $50 million of possible reimbursement. And again, whether or not we're reimbursed, um, first of all, it depends on the eligibility, which I believe I've demonstrated here, but then it depends on the will of the board if you wish to use all of these funds for that, the ARPA funds for that purpose. So that would be a total of seven, almost $79 million. The next, that middle section is what I'm trying to help you to see as far as like what, what the potential uses of these funds are. So with revenue recoupment, we do have most of the portion of the revenue recoupment will be going to the individual special revenue funds in which the revenue was primarily lost. And so this is an attempt to make them whole um, through use of the ARPA funds. Um, so that they are, are not truly experiencing the lost revenue that they otherwise would experience, which would just further stress um, their revenue um, and, and the programs are trying to operate out of those special revenue funds. But there is a, a remainder that does pertain to the general fund, and that uh, is what I have in that, that middle column, remainder available for projects. So that middle column, you then... We, we do not need that in the general fund because we, we're covered there primarily, we're primarily covered there. So this could potentially be used for projects. So that's a total of $7 million. Then if you go into the, the last column where it says savings potentially available for projects, what that is, that is the payroll reimbursement savings, which can be used for anything. It can be used for balancing the budget. It can be used for projects. So I have that in its own separate column. And then moving forward into that very last section, what I'm trying to show you is that we have already used that $3.2 million from 2020 of lost revenue, but the remaining um, pieces are still available to be used for um, projects and potentially balancing next year's budget. So I, hopefully um, that gives you an idea of what I've tried to present to you here. If you have any questions, you know, please feel free to contact me and I'd be happy to answer them for you. Uh, I think we have a question right now. Yes, Mr. Shepherd. So <clears throat> Joe, uh, when, if at all, does a decision have to be made on these funds that are identified as potentially available? Well, does that just carry over to the current year, or these are estimates? So, really, um, let's see. the the you know, that first lost revenue, obviously the one that for two thousand twenty, we've already made the decision. Two thousand and twenty one. Once that's finalized, which will probably, I would say, like within the next month a resolution could be presented to the board to then approve reimbursement for that if it so decides to do so. Um, but then the, the two other years, um, 2022, 2023, I mean, that those are just estimates. Uh, just to give you an idea of perhaps what you'd like to keep aside when you're trying to plan out the use of funds for or to determine what you have available for funds. So it's more for planning purposes. I mean, then in the payroll reimbursement section, that final payroll reimbursement for 2021, that is uh, one of the resolutions that'll be before you, the board this month, next week. So that'll be approved then. And then the other three, again, are estimates, and that's just for planning purposes. Um, you don't need to make a decision, or um, then again, you could 
uh, draft a resolution that would, you know, formally set aside those funds and make known your desire to do so. If we don't make a decision, how are they accounted for at that point? Just well, again, is funds potentially available? Yeah. Well, they're they're they're. Uh, Sorry, I'm trying to think of the right words. These are potential eligible uses of the ARPA funds. So it's there, it's there to as a as something you can keep as your notes over know. and above what's been previously committed. Or nothing's been committed. Yes, it's pot okay. potentially, yes, over and above. And I have a question about the uh, the property tax protection fund. Yes. Uh, as you said, a million three seventy-five would go back to that fund. Yes. What would the balance then be, at your best estimate? Oh, that's a good question. That brings me to my next uh, page, last page. Okay, I will um, withdraw the question. <laughs> may, may I make I'll, a, yeah, yeah, a question? Mr. Tepe. Yes. The uh, estimates that you have here for payroll reimbursement, yes. which, as you say, is from the sheriff's department. Yes. <clears throat> These costs are going to be incurred regardless. That's true. So it's a matter of do we budget for it out of the ARPA funds or do we budget for it in the general funds? That... Well, they will be budgeted for in the general fund. And whether or not you decide to, re what, what happens is if you do decide to reimburse for the, that, it then becomes additional revenue that what it does is it, it, it then if, if you do decide to reimburse those payroll expenses. What that means is that the budget for those payroll expenses is no longer needed. And so it becomes but the quote unquote budgetary savings that we can then put into a reserve to use for whatever purpose we wish to use it for. Thank you. Okay. Is everybody feeling comfortable with what Joe has presented? I have a quick question. Yes, Mr. Sanchez. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, Jill, with these numbers, um, the allocation to special revenue funds proportionate to share of lost revenue, that's that's what we did this past year with um, revenue recoupment. So that's not speaking to any potential uses for budget gap purposes. That's a big topic of discussion in the ARP committee. No, this is not this is not trying to forecast what the budget gaps would be. This is just trying to forecast what would be a potentially available to use for that purpose. So that, like for example, that fifty million dollars um, could potentially be of um, payroll reimbursements could potentially be used for uh, future um, closing the, the the budget gap in future years. Okay. But of course, it only becomes available one year at a time. So. Um, you can only use what is available for that year. And with this, uh, the 2021 lost revenue, it, it's it's much lower than the original projection. And is that due to the uh, unforeseen revenue increase that we had this past year? It, it is. And then, and then the reason why it starts to increase again in 2022 and 2023 is we're using that assumed uh, increase of 4.1%. So we're comparing um, what's forecasted, mm -hmm. which is more like 2% increase compared to what they're allowing you to compare against as a 4.1% increase and then calling that difference lost revenue. So um, it's really just a, a result of the, the parameters that are used to do that calculation. Um, it, it's not to show that we're necessarily going to be doing worse um, than we expected in those 2022 and 2023. It's just worse than what the government is allowing you to expect yeah. it to be. So it's reasonable to assume the actual numbers will come in lower for those years? Uh, I, well, I think so. Um, but <clears throat> then again, I would see what I've done in order to calculate this is I took the 2021 actual figures, which you know are much higher than what we thought. I, so that was my starting point. And then from there, I projected out about 2% roughly in the remaining years, 2% increase. When you compare that to the 4.1% increase that they're allowing you to, um, to compare against, and that's where that um, 7.7 million and 13.6 million difference is coming from. It's a difference in percentage increases. So if I had used 4.1% as my projection for um, 2022 and 2023, 
and then compare that to the government's allowed projection of corporate, it would be zero. So it's just a difference in what we're expecting. So if you're expecting it to increase more than 2%, then that would bring down these numbers um, correspondingly. Thank you. Okay. Anything else? Yes, yes Mr. Shepro. Yeah, so the legislation that you referred to, uh, I take it that that <clears throat> happens by operation of law. There's no discretion in the board to do one thing or another with well, that. No, there is discretion. Um, we, and maybe I should, I'm sorry if I didn't make that point clear. We, we, we were allowed originally a maximum of 4.1%. And we started out using that. Um, and then we used it for the very first calculation. And then in order to be consistent, I was just using it going forward. But if you would like to change that comparison, I mean, that's certainly, I, I believe it's within your discretion to change it. I mean, you can lower it. But in the meantime, they also increased the maximum amount. I think it's to 5.1%. And so we, we could, do, could have the option to compare it against a 5.1% increase, which would um, even make these numbers even larger. But I, 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 I didn't do that because I was got the impression that you're not trying to necessarily use every penny for the county. Okay, I guess my question is, is that, does something happen if we do nothing or do we have to affirmatively say either Yes, we want to take the increase, or no, we don't want to take the increase. Uh, no, I think it's a well. Probably the state's attorney should weigh in on it to be absolutely certain. But my understanding would be, it's whatever you, whatever your the calculation you choose to use, it, and and the board approves of it at the time is is what is used. You don't have to like predetermine what it will be. Okay. Do you, do you understand? Um, and I think we ought to wait perhaps till the art committee has perhaps their meeting and <clears throat> starts discussing this because this may be in their purview. Yeah. And then of course approved of by the board. Yeah, I, I, I confess that I'm still somewhat uh, confused about exactly what all of this means. And I guess we'll sort it out later. Oh, it, my understanding is for 22 and 23, these are estimated numbers. We, we will not know the actual number until the audit is occurring for, for those years. Is that correct? That's correct, yes. And then whether or not we compare against 4.1%, a lesser percent, or up to 5.1% is, is another decision that could be made. For, for this purpose, I used 4.1% to compare against. And then when we get to 24, uh, when all of the... Uh, audits have been done for 23, then we will know actually what money is, is left or, or not after the audit is done for 23, because they'll be rolling over money, I would assume, possibly. Oh, yes, yes. Copy, please. Yeah, uh, yes, Mr. Copy. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, if I may offer an anecdote from my simple brain, um, Watching, uh, I'm a member of a, a pension, and um, when uh, on the annual basis they'll they'll project, um, and we're allowed to go up to seven, seven and a half percent projection, and we never meet that goal with our investments. It's, we get salary investments, uh, CDOs, and and you know where do we securities of the like, and so on and so forth. And we up, end up, uh, you know, lucky to get three, four percent. And um, uh, what happens when they make those projections out there and and and, and inject them into into the uh, the the books is that now we, it it doesn't turn out as planned and now you got you got you've got staff and and uh, and, and more accountants on payroll and uh, this immense effort to put it back in the the worms back in the can. And uh, whereas if you just have been uh, a little bit more conservative on your outlook, then you wouldn't have all of that problem, one. And two, uh, if you did gain an extra percent or two on your money, then, uh, then, then great, you know. Uh, so you win twice by being slightly conservative on your, 
um, uh, interest rate projection. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Kopey. Uh, yes. Madam Chair Sergis, um, Sergis yes. th th this is kind of a, only because Tom just brought that up. Um, two cycles ago, th this board was kind of rattled when IMRF came and said, hey, listen, we're, we're projecting investment revenues to be decreased and that's going to cause this board to find 2 million bucks to shovel into the retirement fund to offset. Um, now that we're kind of past that, I, I don't know if it would be Joe or, or Dale at finance or how do we figure out, did we meet the expectations? Did we not meet the expectations? If their projected returns came in higher, do we get any of that money back? Again, we're not talking about a couple hundred thousand dollars. I remember it to be a, a couple million dollars. Um, and I'm just curious when, when, you know, how that works and what the true up is and, and if there is one at all, or is that just, it is what it is. Uh, and you don't have to answer now. I'm just curious. I, I do know the answer. First of all, the extra money that we did send in, that is not something that we get back. So that's right. It's just a contribution we made and we don't get that back. But it, it, what it does um, is that when IMRF, what it does do for us is when IMRF calculates the rates that the county are, is required to pay. So every year they update the rates, you know, so the percentage that we pay towards IMRF changes based on how well they do with their investments and based on and the impacts of that contribution. So that contribution did lower um, the rates that we needed to pay or that we were, we were required to pay to IMRF the following years. So it did have a positive impact on us in that respect. And then because the economy and, and investments did so well in the past couple of years, that also then um, brought in more um, funds to IMRF through investment earnings, which also then allowed our rates to be lowered. I don't have them in the top of my head, but it was like in seven point something percent, like last year, now this year it's six point some percent. So they came down dramatically as a result of the earnings that IMRF experienced. And, you know, should it go the other way, our, our percentages are going to start going back up again, but it's it's all related. Or the percentages we pay is, is tied to how well they do with their earnings. And it's only because Tom brought that up. Yeah. <clears throat> Only, be, only because Tom brought that up, it just kind of jogged the memory that, you know, that was a big to do a few years back and has that leveled back off. And it sounds like you're, you're saying it has. Yeah. Thanks, Joe. And um, I believe that there has been oftentimes a great pride that Kane County is uh, fully, almost fully vested uh, for its uh, retirement fund. Uh, but unlike the state of Illinois, uh, we as a county are mandated to contribute that money. It's not an option. So we, um, if they say we have to contribute more, um, it is, we have to contribute more. If we have to contribute less, we contribute less, but it is a mandated amount. It's not an option. Right. We can't play a shell game of where that money goes. So are there any other questions? I'm sure that there is going to be um, other, after we get a chance to review this, Joe, I'm, I'm sure that there's going to be other questions to you. And I have a feeling that the ARP committee is going to have a uh, interesting conversation as we uh, further understand uh, the impact of these, uh, these numbers. And I think hopefully uh, on Sunday, we can all give a little prayer and hope that our economy stays as robust as it has been. Uh, so that we can make sure that we can do uh, good work with our additional funds. I, I do have that one last page um, to, to show for you, which is just a quick um, update on what the balances will be. So the COVID payroll reimbursement balance, we started out the year with $5.9 million. And this is from CARES Act payroll reimbursement. So that's, that's what started the, the balance. We're then giving back almost the $8 million we thought we were going to need in order to balance the year's budget. And then on top of that, we have the 10 point, almost $5 million of payroll reimbursement that is in a resolution that's before you this month to approve. 
um, to be reimbursed from the ARPA fund and then to move it into this reserve fund. So that brings it up to the 24.4 million. And then, then we have what's already been used this year as a result of what was built into the budget and some of the changes that have taken place. And that brings the, the balance down to $20 million. Um, and likewise, then on the property tax trees protection fund, um, we have what we started with, um, and then what, what, what we we're adding into it, and that brings us down to almost five million dollars at the at this point in the year. Any questions on this? Nope. It's a lot to consume. <laughs> Mr. Onsik, do you have anything else? No, this is was, <laughs> this quite a bit, <laughs> quite a bit. Um, with that, uh, thank you so much. Well done. Give us a little bit of time to uh, to digest all of this information. Now, is there any old business? None. Okay. Um, there is some new business that I'd like to share with you. Yes. Yes. And we have a, a couple of presenters as well. Um, this is what is being handed out to you as a packet of information that I drafted for you. Um, if there's any additions, I know Mr. Shepro is quite the constitutional expert. Um, if he has any additions to this, please uh, feel free uh, to uh, add them. Uh, it's a Word doc, so it can be simply added um, as, a, as an amendment to this or addendum. Um, this is all the research that I was able to get done regarding- Ma Madam Chair, yes. basically, um, yes. have we received this report in email? Could, could we be sent this report? Absolutely. Um, we'll, we'll get it to you. It's going to be also in your mailbox, um, but we can um, make sure some of it is electronic. I think all of it is electronic now. Um, and we can get it out to you, Mavis. Um, it, it's, uh, it's a good read. Um, it is the history of the resolutions and ordinance and um, constitutional law regarding your compensation for elected officials. Um, this is the last leg of our journey uh, for the reapportionment. And once you set some of these salaries, not all of the salaries, but some of the salaries, uh, especially the county board members, uh, they may be set for the next 10 years. So it's a, it's a thoughtful process. Um, you will also be considering as part of uh, the county board um, that does not necessarily reflect with the mm -hmm. countywide elected offices, but for the county board on what level you would like to continue to have your health insurance, uh, whether there's been questions uh, by county board members that there shouldn't be any health insurance. Um, there is um, an option to have individual coverage and family coverage. So this should be something that you should also consider because it is considered one of your benefit packages, uh, therefore compensation to go along with that. I'm not gonna make any judgment call on that, but that is truly for your consideration to do. Um, if you have any questions on um, the other information that's on there, um, we've got two other documents. One is they're both done by the auditor. Uh, the other one is the salary analysis of elected officials in surrounding counties so that you have some comparison to what other counties are doing. And then also in November, let me get this document. The auditor put together as she does annually, the uh, elected officials compensation report. And that was done March 18th, 2022 for fiscal year 21. So I think this will give you at least a nice background of decisions that were made. Um, 
compensation for some of our elected officials has not been increased for at least 10 years. Um, the last one was uh, brought forward in 2016 or 20, early 2017 uh, to increase compensation. And at that point, um, it was <clears throat> vetoed by the board uh, and it was not passed. Uh, yes. Um, I think I'm looking at that and I'm <clears throat> baffled by the way it's presented. It, it, it's signed by the clerk, it's signed by the board chairman, and it says ordinance failed. And I, I've never recall seeing a, uh, an ordinance that didn't pass. That was signed, I agree. Signed. I agree. Um, so there's, but it, it so in technically it, it doesn't belong here. It's just illustrative of what didn't happen. That's exactly correct. I, I tried to get as much information yeah. as we can. And, and we have uh, our state's attorney is going to be helping us out, uh, go through some of this information. And we also have the chair of the community advisory committee uh, that is uh, has made recommendations. Uh, and she's uh, Ms. Klinkhammer will be um, up to speak in just a moment uh, to share what uh, she learned uh, from their research as well as Jamie Labrillo can help us uh, step through the process. So I think- uh, Madam yes. Chair Sergis here. Mr. Sergis. Um, you had made a, a, a comment in, in the beginning of this that I'm just trying to reconcile. You had correlated this in regards to the reapportionment process. Mm -hmm. Correct. Is there something within that reapportionment process that requires this? Is, is there something that that, I, I, again, I have never been through a reapportionment process, so I'm, I'm not clear as to how one correlates to the other, or did we just consider this an appropriate time to possibly review it? Okay, here we go. <clears throat> Good morning. I'm Assistant State's Attorney Don Truce. So the county's code specifically says that at the time of re that at the time it reapportions its county under this division, the county board shall determine whether the salary to, pay, to be paid the members to be elected shall be computed on a per diem basis, on an annual basis, or on a combined basis, and shall fix the amount of that salary. Um, when you say county code, you are referring to the Illinois. County the county's code, code. Not our county yes. code. Yes, correct. So Chaperon, by law, um, that doesn't mean you have to increase it, but it does mean that you will address it um, and look at it. Okay, so, and, 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 I, and I thank you for that because I had no idea on that or where this was coming from. So that really helps put things in perspective for me. And then just an additional side note, um, it also says that the county board shall determine the amount of additional compensation for the chairman of the county board. So that is another thing that you shall review. So on- I have um, a question on that if I, if I may, just as a follow-up. On the very beginning of this packet, um, it says exactly who you have to address at this period of time. So you shall establish for members of the county board, the county board chairman, the sheriff, the treasurer, and the clerk. Because they're all, except for myself, are all up for election this year. Uh, compensation may be established, or you can wait until 24 for the circuit clerk, the auditor, the coroner, and the recorder. You can choose to do them all during this period of time, or just the ones that are up for election this year, plus mine. You can keep mine stable um, as it is right now, and then it can be reviewed, may be reviewed again um, in 24. And Ken, just so I understood you, I, I don't mean to subvert. So this, Don, this was a state level thing that's baked in, not our county right. level thing. There's no perception by the public that no, you that, got what I'm saying. Absolutely. Thank you um, so this much. This is not you all deciding that this is something you're going to do. This is something the General Assembly is telling you to do, that you shall do it. Okay, thank you. Okay, you are, should we say mandated or, or, or to review? Uh, to review. <laughs> to review. Yeah. Not to, not to increase, but just to review. And then... Uh, just to bring up another note, as long as I'm on that, um, 
it does the compensation, um, and I know the chairwoman included this on her sheet, but um, the compensation changes that if they're done, if there are changes, um, they need to be done by ordinance and resolution and at, at least 180 days before the beginning of the term of the offices whose compensation is to be fixed. So that's the county board, the county board chair, um, and then those elected positions. So that date is June 3rd of this year. Um, June 4th is a Saturday. Okay. Okay. So I had a June 8th, so it's June 3rd? Yes. So if everybody can correct that on their paper. Mr. Shepard, you had a question. Yeah, several. Um, all right, so as I understand and read this, uh, first, um, we, we are not, well, first off, uh, uh, the salaries for the officials who will be elected at the 2024 election, uh, if we chose to set them now, can be changed anytime before 180 days prior to the 2024 election. Yes, as long as okay. it's done by that date. Okay, all right. So, so whether we do something or not for those officials, uh, it's not set in stone until June of 2024, whatever that date is. Well, so yeah, the if any salary changes that you make, and, and on a side note, the date that the county board's salary has to be changed is- I'm only um, asking about the countywide election. I know, it's a couple days later though. I just wanna clear, I'm sorry, yeah. just to go, I wanna clarify that June 3rd is for the elected officials, but we recommend doing them all at once by June 3rd, just because oh. your start date of your term is the first Monday. Um, so it is a couple days after, um, after the, um, the the start date for the elected officials. Um, but um, I'm sorry, Mr. Shepherd. So I just wanted to make sure I, I clarified that. So um, are we- any, any salary, yes, it could not, any salary that takes effect, it can't begin during the incumbency. So it would have, the, that, that salary change would go into effect after the next um, okay that wasn't my question oh then my question next. is if we were today set the salary for the county board chair for the next term we can't do it today but at the next board meeting if we were set the salary for the county board chair or the circuit clerk or the coroner to take effect with the term commencing in december of 2024 we could change that any time before 180 days prior to the 2024 election. Correct. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. So with respect to the terms commencing in 2022, which if I am correct, is the county clerk, the sheriff, and uh, sure. the treasurer. Yes. Those will have to be set by the date in June of this year. Uh, with respect to the compensation of the county board, it, although it says it shall determine that on a decennial basis, it would appear that the other statutes indicate that you are not precluded from making adjustments within the 180 day requirement periodically. You're not stuck for 10 years with what you do. Is no, that correct? That is correct. You could change it, um, you know, after the next elections. They just wouldn't go into effect until the um, until the following elected term. The only thing I will say is, if you change it now, everyone's salary change goes into effect at the same time because um, because this is the only time in this decade that everyone's facing election, then it gets staggered. And so if you make a change, half of you will be getting, you know, half half of the people who are elected or those that are elected will be getting a salary change and other people receiving the lesser salary until the next um, election. Shepro, again, um, I, and I'm not advocating this, but I understand that some local governments like city councils, I think in St. Charles, um, 
adjust it so that nobody is making half the board or whatever it is, is not making the same. That is something that the board theoretically could do. Whether it's desirable or not is another question. Well, and, and that'll be that. Yes, you're right. And that'll be up to the committee um, <clears throat> that makes those decisions. You can also, as you can see by some of the ordinances, oh, um, the, the committee that makes those decisions isn't and the then board bring it make forward. that decision. Oh, the board. And the I have one more clarification. Uh, the does the per diem versus or the the per diem plus salary the uh, per diem or the just the salary. That decision, this is a question, not a statement. Does that decision need to be made now and it cannot be revisited during the 10 years? I, I believe that that needs to be, yes, now. Although I, let me double check on that and I will get back to all of you, but all of you, but that is my understanding. I recall that the last decennial, and I don't know whether it was because we had to, but the decision that when the per diem was removed, it was never revisited. And I think that's why, but okay. I believe I believe that is true, but I will double check that. If if I'm incorrect, I will reach out or send out an email to everyone. No, I guess I would conclude with an inquiry, Madam Chair, is that your intention to have a discussion of this this morning? An introduction, an introduction. Okay. That's simply it. As I was gonna say, I mean, we just were handed this. I understand the people online uh, have not seen it. And there's obviously a, a great deal to digest, so. Correct. Yes. Brown speaking. Mr. Frost. Um, on the second page of this uh, blue uh, salary analysis of elected officials, um, under notables, I think it's kind of interesting. It says the Lake County does not have an elected auditor and the county clerks in both Winnebago and McHenry um, also serve as the recorder. And it, it just kind of occurs to me because this has been discussed a few times over the years that uh, you know there may be an opportunity for some restructuring that would allow us the funds to um, maybe become more efficient in certain areas and be able to uh, fund a uh, county administrator. So I, I just think that that's something we should talk about. So I guess my question is, and, and you can get back to me on this if you don't know the answer, but uh, is that is that, I assume that's up to the board too, whether we have those positions even, or can want to um, consolidate them or? So let, yeah, let me look into that. Can I? Oh, yes. Yeah. We've got the constitutional. The constitution bill. requires certain offices cannot be changed or abolished by the board. It provides in the case of some, uh, the recorder's office uh, can be uh, merged into the county clerk's office. And I believe that's been done in a number. Cook County did it, has to be done by referendum, cannot be done by board action. Uh, certain offices like the county treasurer, uh, cannot be eliminated or restructured. Although uh, long ago, Cook County, the treasurer and the sheriff, it used to be, could not be reelected. And that was changed by a referendum. Uh, the, uh, the auditor's uh, office can be made appointive or it can be abolished. I think there's only less than 20 elected county auditors in the state of Illinois. And that also could be done by referendum. And there the only impact would be is that if you were to do away or consolidate those offices, it would have to be done before the commencement or before the commencement of the new term uh, of that elected official. A state's attorney, I'm sure will look into that, but that's my general understanding. If we were to put a referendum on the November ballot to say merge the offices that are eligible, um, that would take effect with the 2024 election. It wouldn't affect the term of office of anybody now serving. That's correct. That is correct. Thank you. Okay. Um, now, if I may, um, 
and I know there's a lot of questions still to be asked. Um, I'd like to bring up uh, Ms. Klinkhammer, uh, Mrs. Klinkhammer, and uh, again, she graciously chaired uh, the committee, uh, which brought forward uh, three individuals uh, who gave recommendations to the, uh, now to the board, uh, regarding their thoughts of where compensation should be. Uh, so welcome and thank you. I, I got a bigger packet than all of you, and I think this goes back to the 1960s or something, but um, uh, I was the chair of the committee of the Compensation Review Committee, and uh, the other members were Mike Reed, who is the village president of Hampshire, and Mike Lee, who is the president and the CEO of the Kane County um, Teachers Credit Union. Um, we were charged by the chairman who, um, knowing that there was the 180 day time frame that he had to um, be adhered to, had asked us to look at the different salaries. Um, I have to say that I was kind of surprised that between um, no votes and county-wide freezes, that there have been no raises for, I, I think we went back to 2000 and, Eight, 2006, and the elected, the elected offices had not had any um, raises. I know, you know, raises for elected officials is always a hard thing. Um, not maybe so much for the elected offices, but when you're talking about your own salaries, it becomes very hard. Um, so we are going to try and maybe make it easier for you with what we recommended and what we looked into. Um, normally, a municipality would do a, a, a compensation, um, comparable compensation study, which is kind of what the three of us did, knowing that a county and a municipality are different things. Some of the counties in Illinois, it's hard to compare because either population or just the way that they're run. So um, we just kind of tried to work with some numbers. So for the elected offices of treasurer, sheriff, and clerk, we came up with a 5% increase that would um, become effective December 1st of this year. And then on December 1st of the following years, have a 2% raise. And just commit to that for the four years. Um, that was an interesting question. We did not. Um, contemplate um, putting anything in for the next election. So the people that are up in 2024, which you could do the same thing, you, you could set that same um, compensation for them. Um, but we didn't, we didn't do that. We didn't, <clears throat> not that we didn't suggest, I don't even think we ever discussed it. No. But again, if you wanted to do that for the next round, you would have to do it 180 days before the um, election of 2024. So now these people will be getting, will be making more money than, um, you know, I think somebody asked about when you, um, the, another reason I think the chairman brought up the elected, you're the county board, um, compensation was because you, everybody is up at one time. But that is true, um, what Mr. Shepro said, if you want to um, stagger it, um, that can be done too. We, I remember in St. Charles, we did do that a lot. Although I don't think they've <laughs> um, raised their compensation for their elected officials for many, many years either. So. That is what we were suggesting with the elected officials offices. And we just did it for the three, um, the three that are currently going to be elected in November. Uh, and the county board, you had a, the committee had a firm recommendation for the county board. If yeah, we, um, we had a lot of discussion um, and I think if you did do a comparison of a lot of counties, you would find that $25,000 
is a lot of a lot higher than any of the municipalities. Plus, you have more people. Um, we did do where um, you know, that comes to about four hundred and eighty dollars a week. And and I know that some of the areas are bigger. Some of them have more population, but it does come to representing an average of 22,183 people in each of the districts, if you take the 24 districts. Um, and again, you know, we're trying not to get into, when you discuss it, and I hope you don't either, about personalities, people, you know, who you represent, who, you know, the area you represent, how much work you do. I mean, that really, um, I know when we were in St. Charles, we did have a comparable community because we thought we should get paid more as elected officials. And when we came back and saw what everybody else made, we found that we made a whole lot more than most of them. Um, $25,000 is most than most mayors make in Kane County. And um, and again, it's, it's not a full-time job, it's, No, I'm again. If if with the health insurance, I think that was something that really, um, you know, if you have a county that doesn't give your employees part time employees um, health insurance, it's hard to justify. Um, I was looking at a chart from ten years ago, and the benefits actually were worth more than the salary even. Um, that was a time, I think, too, when there wasn't an, an availability of health insurance uh, as easily as there is now with once the Affordable Care Act came into uh, being. I mean, there were times when you would take your health insurance through the county if you had a pre-existing condition. Uh, it's a very generous package. It pays, I think, what, 83% of the premium. Uh, I, and I know that somewhere along the line too, you did get rid of the pension benefit. And, but the health insurance benefit is worth a whole lot more than um, the uh, pension payment was. So I think it's not, that's up to you of course, but I think it's something that you probably need to, to look into um, just the salaries alone cost the county $600,000. And if you um, look at the value, money value of the benefits, it's almost as much as that. So that is just what we were looking at. I know it's a hard thing um, to, to do. Uh, so we, did, if you want to leave it at 25,000, I mean, that would be our recommendation that you don't go any higher. Um, and like I said, just, I think you have to, to look at it realistically of, you know, you, you have a board who has 24 members. And, and so anything you do is times 24 and that can get really costly. And again, to the detriment of the other elected officials who are um, have people working under them that make more money than they do. And that's that's the way of an elected office, I think, in, in a county or sometimes even in a municipality. But um, we would encourage that you definitely for the elected offices um, start, the, start the cycle of yearly raises. Um, it's hard with elected officials because you can't really do merit raises because merit raises are called elections when you're elected. But um, we would really uh, appreciate if you would at least do it for this cycle. And if you wanna look into 2024 and set this parameter you know, going forward, that certainly be something to look into, but always remember that whenever you do this, you do have to adhere to the 180 days. That's the important thing, and I give the chairman credit for recognizing that last fall when she first um, brought it up. So, 
Uh, thank you. Are there any questions from Ms. Klinkhammer? Yes. A uh, couple of questions. Uh, mm -hmm. there. Um, how many meetings did your committee have? Two. Okay. I was at the last one and I recall uh, there was a call for minutes and there were minutes, there were no minutes available from the previous meeting. Uh, and you mentioned that uh, you did a comparison, I think you said with other municipalities, but you didn't indicate whether you had done any comparison with other counties, counties as to what they- Those paid. are all in, in here. Oh, okay. But yeah. you, you, you called out that by you were comparison with, with cities and villages. And I wondered if what consideration you gave to what other counties paid their uh, uh, board members. No, I think we did. I mean, we looked at all the, I, I, you know, but again, there's with the different counties, some make more, some make less. The population is different. You're not necessarily, you know, the apples to oranges thing. Mm -hmm. That would be true for the municipalities yeah. I mean, like as well. The, the first thing, you know, you always hear is DuPage County, but of course they're a whole different, you know, their population is higher. And then you look at somebody like Will County, whose population is probably a little less than Kane County's and they, they don't pay, yeah, you know, McHenry. And again, with the problem with other counties is that along the path somewhere they have raised theirs or not. I mean, it's, it's, it's again, the problem with um, salaries of elected people is you're leaving it in the hands of elected people. So you can pay them whatever you want. You know, we're giving them, we suggested a 5%. You can give them a 10% if you want. Um, you can give them nothing. I mean, if you go through this, this packet, I mean, there were, I think two times it was completely frozen, which meant nothing. How, how did your committee determine the 2%? I mean, when I was at the meeting, I seem to recall mm -hmm the discussion centered on what the union contracts provided for employees. And I, was that what informed your recommendation for the elected mm -hmm. officials? Well, I think one of the, if you recall, we talked about a COLA, but kind of in uncertain times, I mean, that could be higher than we wanted it to be. I mean, we, we again, we, you have nothing to go on other than and well, I presumably we had to go on the report that you submitted. That's okay. I, I have nothing further. Thank uh, you, Mr. Shepro, and all. This was just a recommendation mm -hmm. from community mm -hmm. members um, for your guidance uh, for this uh, the committee's guidance um, because I thought it was very important um, to follow my um, what had happened previously during the reapportionment, um, and that was under Miss McConaughey. Chairman McConaughey. So I looked at um, what she did and I tried to replicate it as the uh, appropriate manner uh, since that seemed to be the, the system to work with. So this was that recommendation, Ms. Winicki. Oh, thank you, Madam Chair. I'm sorry, Sue, you, you mentioned uh, three elected official um, increases, the 5% increase. One was one was sheriff and I think one was the clerk and what was- Treasurer. The treasurer. Those are the three that are up this Okay, cycle. and you didn't include the chairman in that then? Well, because she's not up until 2024. Oh, that, that's right. Yeah, these are the, right. these, these would take yeah. effect December 1st, 2022, the three people that are elected. So like I said, they would, you know, for the other offices that are making, I mean, $100,000 seems to be kind of, what a lot of them were making, but this would only be, and, and that would be the staggering of, unless you approve now for 2024, which you can do. Um, I do have one more question for you, yeah. Sue. Uh, uh, during your committee, did you take into consideration that by virtue of being an elected county board member, we're forest preserve commissioners and under the Forest Preserve, we have several committee meetings. Mm -hmm. We have an executive meeting. Um, we're responsible for 
taxpayer funds as far as purchasing uh, forest preserve lands. You know, it's mm -hmm. the uh, taxpayers' money that help us do that. And um, so I was just curious, um, you know, that that takes time as well as mm -hmm. all the other committees that our county's on, our county board members are on. So I'm just wondering if you took right. that into consideration. That's that's up to you in your discussion. When you discuss your salaries that you can bring out, you know, everything. We said, just leave it the way it is. Mm -hmm. That was that was our recommendation. And then, you know, that's up to you when you have the discussion, whether you wanna leave it, whether you want more, if you can justify that, um, that I mean, the county board hasn't had a raise in, I don't know how many years that was. Yeah, it was 10 years too. Yeah, and, and so. just FYI, uh, I know we're not comparable population-wise to DuPage County, but at one time, uh, the county board members in DuPage were Forest Preserve Commissioners, mm -hmm. and they chose to split the two, and um, they get quite a, a large salary for the county board members, and it's the same for the Forest Preserve mm -hmm. Commissioners. So it's yeah. just, I'm no, just giving I, you I, 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 But you don't have to justify it to me. You have to justify it to the taxpayers. Uh, yeah. And I'm just saying, you know, instead of... You know, people are, are very cognizant, I think, of, of elected officials. You know, that's why I'm glad I'm not in anymore to have to, to justify everything. <laughs> I get it, Sue. But, um, yeah. <laughs> you know, it, it is hard. And I, I remember the last time when I was a mayor and we were trying to get a pay raise. And, yeah. again, like I said, you're all going to have your own opinions. I mean, some of you can't even believe that you get paid to do it. And then others of you think it's not enough, maybe. Yeah. So, and, and I'm just making a statement to, you know, anybody who's listening or mm -hmm. uh, will view this video, just so that information is out there. So thank, mm -hmm. but thank you for your work. So. Yes, Mr. Bates, Martin. please. Uh, uh, hold on, Ms. Bates, Mr. Martin. Speak. I have a, a comment that results in a question, I guess. The, um, I, I, on a, on a personal level, have always believed that that we as part-time employees should not be getting benefits. We don't pay them to anybody else, and that's been my belief. And um, to that point, I understand, and I know that the vast majority of the board is benefiting from the health insurance that's available to us. I don't think that's accurate. No, I don't think it's accurate either. Ms. Ms. Well, if it's left. not, if it's not, then I apologize for the inaccuracy. But here's my here's my question, which is perhaps less abrasive than my point. I believe I recall having been with uh, with other public bodies that, um, at least in one circumstance, I recall that the insurance program was made available. At the, uh, at, at the that the governmental program was made available to the employee, and they could pay that rate themselves and benefit from the plan, but that the cost was uh, borne by the employee and not by the by the uh, public body. And I would like to know if that's the case, which would kind of, in my mind, create a hybrid of of, of being able to address the insurance issue in a way that that would perhaps enable people to maintain the insurance. Um, but do so at their own expense. Um, and I, um, Ms. Labrillo is here, but if, and if we can table that and I'll bring her up because she did provide a report in your packet about um, redacted reports. We don't know who is collecting insurance and who's not. Um, and uh, she'll be able to just give a, a quick overview of that. Um, Ms. Bates. Well, um, I had a point almost like Mr. Martin's, which is I would like to know how many board members are taking benefits. I, I would guess not very many are receiving this um, this full medical medical benefit. I, I waived it myself. So um, I, I wonder if many have not also waived it. Okay, um, we'll be able to address that in just a minute, Ms. Silva. 
Um, yes, good morning. Uh, actually, I have a couple of comments on that, and I'd like to preface that with the fact that mm -hmm. I have never ra voted to raise my own elected official salary. However, um, there is another side to this. Um, there are folks who would love to run to, excuse me, would love to run for office, are highly qualified, but just don't have the means to devote the time because it does entail a lot of time. Um, as a new doctor, young single mom at the time, um, I probably would not have been able to run for office if there were not a salary. Do I feel that um, it is a, 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 it were, yes, we're, we're um, certainly blessed to be, to have a salary and certainly it's a good salary. However, we do have to consider the fact that um, some people can't afford to run uh, and would bring a lot to the position, to the county. Um, because of, like I said, their training and education and different things, but people have different circumstances in life. Um, that said, given the pandemic, given everything, I'm not in favor of raising my own elected official salary. Um, I would never vote for that. Um, however, this is one that I'm going to have to think about because I do think elected officials uh, do take on a lot. And I know the uh, countywide officials um, are a full-time position. So I have to think about that. But again, offering some salary is important because uh, people like myself uh, in at the stage in life that you're in might find it a little bit more difficult. Um, perhaps my earning potential at the time was pretty good. But um, having to dedicate time to uh, this labor of love also sometimes costs us, um, costs us financially. So there is another side to the fact that we should or could consider offering salaries and uh, benefits to elected officials because not, not everyone has the same walk in life. And again, some of us wouldn't be able to afford it at the time where they're not some sort of um, stipend for what we do. Thank you. Thank you. Um, are there any other questions for Mrs. Klinkhammer? Yes. I guess just kind of a wrap up thought. I, I stated publicly in the past, it was probably back when we raised the, the salaries 10 years ago or whatever it was, but uh, that I would never do it without an advisory committee. So thank you for setting that up and I'd like to thank the committee for uh, spending all the time on it. And uh, I do appreciate it. it's hard to report to a board about their salaries. <laughs> I feel sorry for you, but uh, thanks for your time and, and uh, handling all that. Thanks, Jess. Thank you very much, Mrs. Klinkhammer. Yes, Mr. Uh, Mr. I know normally we do not distribute uh, unapproved minutes, but given that this committee is, I think its job is done, uh, I would ask that the draft minutes from the two meetings that they had be made available to the board members so everybody can see what actually was discussed uh, and presented. I believe there were some information packets that were made available to them. And I think it would be very instructive for the board members to see uh, what was actually said, done and discussed. Uh, Mr. Shipper, I was just informed that the second uh, meeting is indeed in your packet. The second meeting. The draft, the draft. okay. Right. And how about the first ones? I did not, I did not go for that. If we can hold and finish our thank you uh, to Mrs. Klinkhammer uh, and to Mike Reed and Michael Ivey. Uh, appreciate you have one more question for Ms. Klinkhammer. Oh, Ms. I'm Klinkhammer. sorry. <laughs> um, I was at the, the last meeting and my recollection, but maybe it is wrong, is that with respect to the health insurance, uh, you were making no recommendation, but you recommended that the executive committee set up a committee to consider the question of health insurance with the suggestion that maybe they shouldn't do it. And it was presented here as this was a recommendation. Maybe I'm just parsing details, but uh, there, there seemed to be uh, a, some confusion about what the actual committee recommendation was. Was it, was it to review and consider or was it to eliminate it? It was to consider and, and review. Okay, thank you. That's, that's what my understanding was, mm -hmm. absolutely. All right, once again, many thanks. Truly appreciate it.
Um, now, one more, uh, because we had two questions on the floor about the uh, health insurance. So Jamie Labrillo will come up and speak on that. Good morning, Jamie Labrillo, Executive Director of Human Resources. Um, if there were questions for me, did you want to restate those questions so that I can answer you accurately? Um, I believe the first one was uh, the report that you shared uh, that's in everybody's packet who's here. Um, how many people are on the board, not the, the countywide elected, but just on the board, are receiving health insurance? So those are listed on the report. So each entry, each line on that represents a person who is on insurance. So, so I have 12. Yes. Madam Chair, could you ask your secretary to send us these reports immediately? An um, email. They were sent out to the executive committee during this meeting. So they are in your inbox. Thank you, ma'am. And there are 13 people now uh, who are receiving dental insurance. Brett. By, by your report. Yes, ma'am. Half the board receiving rather from individual insurance um, or family insurance, spouse and, and family. So there's three tiers. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> uh, any other questions regarding the health insurance? The, yes, for one. Mr. Martin. If, if, and maybe it takes research as to whether or not we could create a program where we were entitled to the benefit of the insurance availability, but we'd pay for it with our own funds, if that is, is, is a possibility. That's certainly a possibility. That is what we currently offer to employees who work between 21 and 30 hours per week. They are eligible to participate in the insurance at their own cost. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions regarding this for Mr. Liberolo? Okay, very good, thank you. Um, thank you so much. So the, um, I would like now to introduce uh, uh, who, who is going to be serving on the compensation, the subcommittee. And Don can help me work through this to make sure that uh, I'm, I'm following a appropriate protocol. Um, the subcommittee of the executive committee who will be reviewing compensation uh, because it has to then come through the executive committee, the executive committee uh, for your approval. And the Cliff Surges um, is going to be chairing it. So everybody be gentle with him. Uh, <laughs> Dale Berman, Ron Ford, Barbunicki, and myself will be ex officio. But you're, um, Madam Chair, I, I'm sorry to interrupt, but um, <clears throat> if you are going to have a subcommittee, it's going to have to be an advisory or ad hoc because mm -hmm. otherwise, according to the um, Kane County Code, a subcommittee, um, one moment, please. Sub, the formation of a sub, subcommittee requires a majority vote of the standing committee or county board and shall consist of three or more members. Um, additionally, there is no vote for formulating a subcommittee on the agenda today, so you wouldn't be able to go forward with that. So either you'd have to schedule okay. a vote um, if you want it to be an official subcommittee. Otherwise, if you're just going to be solely appointing, um, <clears throat> then... It can be an ad hoc or advisory committee. Um, and then that is consistent with um, Robert's rules also. Um, okay, very good. Because this is the first I've heard of that. So thank you for this guidance. Um, so Don, can you stay there for a minute? So we have clarity. We can right now do an ad hoc committee so that they can begin to discuss with each other at the board, which meets next week, could we then put a resolution in with this recommendation to have an official subcommittee of the executive committee? Yes. Good. What's the difference between the two? 
once I guess one the same right? in the end. <laughs> I mean, is there really a difference or get twice the pay? You can't. <laughs> uh, actually, you can't get paid for that. But <laughs> so what is your what is your recommendation, Don? Yeah, I don't know. I, What's the right way to do this. Well, there it's just the options. And as to a difference, I mean, it's not there is not really if we do say. an ad hoc. Berman. Yes, Mr. Berman. If we do an ad hoc committee now, we could get started. Yes. Correct. Otherwise, we have to wait. I think Correct. that is. So the that's difference. the only reason. It's only till next Wednesday, so it's six and one half. Hours. Well, yeah. That is the difference. Um, so let's let's go consensus because it is coming through the executive committee. So all of you have a chance to weigh in on this. Um, would you? I think we're all in agreement that an ad hoc committee should be immediately formed. Is that? Oh, I shouldn't say that. Do we all? Do you and all? There agree? can't be a vote. No, but just. But I guess you could ask people's opinions. Yes, Mr. Martin. I, I agree with your effort at establishing a consensus. Uh, I just didn't write fast enough. I want to make sure I know who you're appointing. Oh, sure. It's Mr. Surges. Yeah. Mr. Berman, Mr. Ford, uh, and Mrs. Winicki, okay. uh, and myself. Okay. And of course, everybody else is invited to pitch in if you so choose. <clears throat> yes. Step here. Do we get a say on the chairman of this committee? Yes. Just a joke. <laughs> <laughs> that is my purview. <laughs> All right. So I think uh, yes, Madam Chair. Just one uh, one thing. I'm not officially a member of the executive committee any longer, but I'd be happy to serve on this committee. Correct. Now, I don't know if that would make a difference because you're saying a subcommittee of the executive committee. Well, we have- Ad hoc though. It's, it's an ad hoc. Ad hoc. Ad hoc. It's an okay. ad hoc. So, all right, so now my next question, would you prefer to be an ad hoc or should we move forward with a formal resolution? Ad hoc. Ad hoc, ad hoc. All right, we got it. The vice chair will note that the vice chair is not ex officio on ad hoc committees, which is either a good or a bad thing, depending on your point of view. Only good. But, but nonetheless, your opinion is always <laughs> welcome. <speaking> to that. <laughs> welcome and needed. All right, so we have officially established an ad hoc committee. Congratulations, Mr. Surges. More on your plate. Well, you have established an ad hoc committee. <laughs> Correct. The board doesn't establish ad hoc committees. That's true, but together, you know, working together, we're going to get this done. All right. Um, very good. That was a wonderful conversation. Let's go on to our next item. Let me put my materials away. If there are any other questions on this, we're ready to go. And Mr. Surges will convene the ad hoc committee um, soon. By June 3rd. I see that deadline written in big, bold letters. Yes. When is the, I'm sorry, I was out for a minute. When is this ad hoc committee going to meet? Uh, I will have a schedule put together by Friday in your emails. How's that? <laughs> Just formed 30 seconds ago. Let's, can you give me till Friday? How's it going? How's it going? Yeah. Do you have reports yet? Oh, okay. This is government in action. <laughs> And the, the charge to the ad hoc committee, again, I'm sorry, I was out uh, at a call of nature. Um, the charge to the ad hoc committee is what? Uh, to uh, recommend compensation for the county board members and the elected officials who are going to be up for office. That would be the treasurer, the sheriff, and the clerk, county clerk uh, for 2022. That is the shell. The ad hoc committee may make a uh, similar recommendation uh, for the officials, and I'm sorry, the county board and the county board chairman. Um, you may make recommendation uh, for the remaining elected officials that will be um, going up for office in 24. And insurance? And insurance, thank you. And re make recommendation regarding health insurance. Thank you. And is there a date for the committee to report back to the executive committee? We'll most likely have to have a special a meeting of the executive committee uh, this month. 
because of, well, or, or in May. So we'll give us a few minutes and we will work that through. And perhaps you could make a report uh, at the next week's board meeting, just to bring everybody up to speed. Karen, if you could send that charter language to me via email, that would help dramatically. <laughs> Keep everybody focused. Okay, very good. This is once every 10 years, so um, it's hard to get everything ramped up completely uh, because it's not something we do all the time. Madam Chair, if I could ask one question though. Yes. Ken, you, you were kind of saying, and, and Dawn, you were kind of saying like maybe half of the elected um, like sheriff coroner is up now, then the other half is up in 2024. Are we suggesting that we want all of those? Do we want a staggered tiered? Or are you suggesting that you want those all put together at one time? I'm, I'm kind of done. missing that. That's really your decision. I mean, because nothing can go into effect until after the ne after the next election for whatever elected position. Okay. So, sure, you could if if you know. I know there are time constraints here, so maybe you don't. You so, know. my next question might be to some of the 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 more seasoned veteran commissioners. If you were around in the last 10 year cycle, how did we do it then? Did, were those staggered or has it been our, to put them together? If you look at the packet, they were all together. They were together. Okay. That's what I'm, yes. since I didn't get the packet in time to review, yes. I, I just have a question. So is, is everybody in agreement on that? It's and going it, to be difficult enough. Make one decision. No. Well, the pain you know, okay. Oh, okay. Yes. Uh, yes. Berman, here. This is not a ten-year thing. This can we can do this every two years. Right. You, you, not a ten-year thing. We can do it every two years. My point being, if it hasn't been done, how has it been done okay. historically? Right. It's and are we interested in in changing that, or we have a flavor of that? I, I mean, think that can be discussed. Okay. Um, when you when you have that meeting. Understood. All the. All the documentation shows that it was all at the same time. All at the same time. Thank you. And sometimes it was approved, sometimes not. Okay. Fair enough. It's a hot topic of conversation. All right. We have much left to cover. Does everybody want to uh, move, move forward now? Joel admitted it totally. I we're we are on to a consent agenda. Um, <laughs> Mr. Sanchez. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, we have two resolutions under the American Rescue Plan. Um, can I ask to move them both and then describe them or go one at a time? Um, it'll be up to you. Okay. Well, I would ask for a motion and a second to approve both um, for placing and for we'll placement move. on the consent Eight agenda. Second. Okay. The first one is uh, creating the part-time position for administrative coordinator. We currently have Jenny Smith in our um, temporary assistant position, and we're creating a position so she can become an actual um, employee of the county for the life of this program, the American Rescue Plan Act, and also making budget adjustments for the program manager as well. And then the second resolution is clarifying a previous resolution um, to make it more specific, allowing the finance department to bring uh, an employee on to assist in their work that would also be made available, who would also be made available for American Rescue Plan Act work. And those are the two resolutions. Okay. Is there any conversation on this discussion on these two items? Yes, Mr. Shepherd. Uh Jared, is, this is to resolve the jurisdictional line question about whether we can ask Ernst and Young for advice on something that arguably was not in their specific. No, 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 this is, this, this is, is just uh, a move from temp from to, to employee status. Yeah. For Jenny Smith, uh, our, our current uh, committee assistant. Okay. Then assistant. I guess I don't understand number two, cause I, the second one is a previous resolution that authorized the hiring of an assistant state's attorney and an employee for mm -hmm. finance. Um, the intent being to 
have them available um, to the American Rescue Plan Committee and the County Board for that grant work. Um, but also knowing that there's not always going to be full time work under those uh, guidelines, we wanted to make sure that they can also perform the other duties of the state's attorney's office and the finance department. Okay. Any other discussion? Hearing none. Please call the vote. Bates. Yes. Berman. Berman, yes. Ford. Ford, yes. Bras. Yes. Gums. Gums, yes. Kenyon. Yes. Tyus. Tyus, yes. Martin. Martin, yes. Olina. Olina, yes. Sanchez. Sanchez, yes. Strathman. Strathman, yes. Sturgis. I'm sorry, are we voting on one and two? Yes. Collectively? Mm -hmm. Correct. Teppi. Teppi, yes. Davist. Davist, yes. Repro. Yes. 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 Okay, very good. Excellent. Okay, the next one is uh, county development, John. Uh, we are asked to agree that we'll accept money from the Illinois <laughs> Housing Authority. Teppi uh, moves. Comes <laughs> on second. We have many seconds. Uh, any discussion? Hearing none, please call the roll. Yeah, Gums. we have a Gums. second. Gums. <clears throat> seconds. Bates? Yes. Berman? Berman, yes. Ford? Ford, yes. Bras? Yes. Gums? Gums, yes. Kenyon? Yes. Pius? Pius, yes. Martin? Martin, yes. Molina? Molina, yes. Sanchez? Sanchez, yes. Strathman? Strathman, yes. Sturgis? Yes. Teppi? Teppi, yes. Davist? Davist, yes. Shepro? Shepro, yes. Yes. Yes, yes. This pass is very good. Um, executive, um, Mr. Shepro, could you please uh, lead that for us? I think that I am not really in a position to uh, address those and possibly they could be better presented by others. Uh, would somebody like to present this, Mr. Berman? Do you want to, uh, can you lead us through these budget adjustments? Oh, yes. I can, uh, thank you. I'd like a motion to approve uh, one through four of the executive uh, consent agenda. And uh, if we decide to take one out, we can amend that. And amend that. Well, let's start by taking out number one, Shepro. All right. Any All right. others? We have a motion to approve uh, two through four. Tuppy moves. Kaya second. Seconds. Any discussion on uh, items number two, three, and four? Hearing none, please call the roll. Bates. Bates. Berman. Berman, please. yes. Yeah, please come back to me. Ford. Ford, yes. Yes. Gums. Gums, yes. Kenyon. Yes. Caius. Yes, yes. Martin? Martin, yes. Molina? Molina, yes. Sanchez? Sanchez, yes. Strathman? Strathman, yes. Sturgis? Yes. Tepe? Tepe, yes. Davist? Davist, yes. Shepro? Shepro, yes. Yeah. Yes. Bates? Bates, yes. Thank you. Okay. All right, uh, item one. Authorized in the position of part-time administrative coordinator. I'm sorry. Authorized in fiscal year 2022 budget adjustment for the finance department, uh, $40,235. Moves. Okay, very good. Uh, just, motion to approve. I think we need discussion right now. We need a motion. Oh, a motion to approve. Motion first. Motion, I didn't hear a second. Right, second. Seconds. Yes. Right. Now we have a motion and a second. We can discuss. No, thank you. Yes. Question, Madam Chair, you and I had discussed moving this back to committee. Um, I sent an email out yesterday with additional information on this um, and, and that I'd like that move back to committee at this time. So a motion? Um, I don't, I'm not sure chronologically how that works, but that is a motion. Motion to table to the committee would be a motion. Motion to re-refer to committee. Okay, yes. Second, Shepro. All right, is there any discussion on this? Yes, Mr. Martin. Yeah, I, I'm in favor of the referral, but I think that 
if I understand the issue correctly, what we're talking about is um, not the economic changes, but where the money should come from in our budget. Mm -hmm. And and I, I know that there are some employment. John, my intention would to be this, that and I would like to have a, mm -hmm. a, a just kind of a consensus that we're supportive of mm -hmm. the ultimate result. The question is, how do we how do we properly lodge it within our system? I, I think the I think you're accurate in that statement. Yes. Um, yes. Thank you, Madam Chair Sanchez here. Um, I'm not sure what the the goal of sending it back to committee would be simply because my understanding is that this is just a the formal resolution and budget adjustments reflecting the uh, consensus that was given to our finance director at a recent meeting. Uh, am I wrong on that? That's my understanding also. My understanding as well. Perhaps we should bring up Mr. Onsick and he can explain this once again. Yes, I'd be happy to exp um, explain it, but I, I want to be careful that it's not nothing um, regarding the specific personnel are mentioned in open meeting. But I would just like to clarify that this resolution has nothing to do with the payroll department, absolutely nothing to do with the payroll department. This has to do with the finance department. And so to move it back to committee to have a discussion about payroll is, is, is has no, it doesn't make any sense because it has nothing to do with this specific resolution. This is to restructure the finance department. It has nothing to do with the payroll department. There was already money in the budget for the payroll department changes. That has already been done. Those changes have been implemented. There's no going back and undoing it or changing it. What we're that this is talking about is the changes for the finance department and providing the budget for that. For that position. For, That's for the correct. Positions within the finance department. Uh, and my understanding is, is that there are two levels of conversation. One is this one with finance, and the other one is uh, DAR. Um, and that discussion is something that we still need to move forward on what to do with the payroll department. Um, so this is this is separate from this discussion. This is a separate from not. not yeah, that's for the question. So just to, to clarify, the, the structural change is not moving some personnel mm. payroll in this case from <laughs> under the finance department to somewhere else. Right. Is that they the structural just, change we're you know talking about? It's alluded to, but that is not in this resolution. Correct. This, these are structural changes involving the finance department, excluding payroll. So it has, this this resolution has nothing to do with payroll. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Thank you. My so, mistake. so for the time being, payroll remains in the finance department. It's it, the two, the position, the two yes, positions that, in that's payroll. Correct. There's absolutely no change on, uh, for okay. that discussion at all on this. Absolutely. Okay. No. That's yet to be had. Thank you. B Bates, please. Um, hold on, Ms. Bates, Mr. Teppe. Madam Chair uh, Teppe here. Um, I know you and I had a private conversation about this, and I was involved in a uh, conversation a week or so ago about this. My understanding on this matter is this is a specific department that has a uh, situation where um, employees have been given offers or promise or potential offers uh, to go elsewhere. And we have had that throughout the county in various departments. We've had several departments come and say, you know, we're losing people because we're not paying them properly. I've, I've used the phrase, kick the can down the road. We need to be able to address this particular issue and personally, I think it's inappropriate for us to address them individually through emergency type petitions. And that's what I object to. We need to have a structure to be able to be competitive with salaries and, and to be able to handle that without everything being treated as an exception. And that's what I have concerns about. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Yes, Mr. Martin. Oh, I'm sorry, Ms. Bates. And then Mr. Um, Martin. So um, is this the same issue as 
uh, Mr. Sturgis addressed in an email yesterday about creating a new position of um, to to keep this one employee from from leaving. Is this that is this that issue? This resolution does not address that issue. Not does not address that is separate from. Okay. It's related to, but separate from. Thank you. Yes, Mr. Martin. Based on the clarification that that I think at least that I feel I've had in this, uh, I think I alluded to the fact that I would support moving this back to committee, but I, it, it, I'm changing my mind and I will vote against sending it back to committee because I think it's important to get the issue resolved uh, today. Thank you. Mr. Shepro. Um, Shepro, I, I guess now I am somewhat confused as what the purpose of sending this back to committee was, and perhaps my, my second was uh, ill-informed. Uh, could we have a clarification of what the intent or purpose of sending it back to committee would be? Um, Madam was, Chair, if I may. Absolutely. So my, my understanding of this in, in executive session at the finance committee, um, I was not um, comfortable, knowledgeable, maybe it's my shortcoming and, and not understanding, where we had conversations, we seemingly mixed the words payroll and finance intermittently within that conversation. We gave consensus during the executive session of the finance committee and, and did not solidify that with a vote afterwards as to exactly what it was we were moving forward. Um, in retrospect coming into today, and I'm struggling to pull it up on my computer, but the resolution is for the restructuring of the finance department and I don't believe that in that executive session, we discussed any such re restructuring. We talked about making some emergency increases in salaries because some key employees may have been offered a position someplace else. So I, I, to me, I'm failing between a restructuring of what? I've seen no restructuring. There is no model, there was no presentation. There was nothing brought to us. All that was brought was we need immediate money into a situation for a shortcoming, which I believe everybody gave very clear consensus that those employees are valuable and we do not want to lose them. But to vote with language that says this is a restructure of the finance department, uh, we're, we're voting on what? I will challenge anybody that's sitting here to say, I, I'm sorry, I didn't see a restructuring. That's nice language, and I appreciate somebody putting it in there, but, but I truly, I didn't see that. So my point of moving this back is to say, I would like some clarity between the payroll component, which I am advocating for returning payroll to human services, versus the finance department, which I'm understanding these guys are overworked beyond belief, and we need to get them more people, more help. But I don't think that that's been laid out yet. And my point to move that back to finance is to say, if you're going to use the term, you know, we're going to reshuffle the deck on this, then let's do that in earnest so that we totally understand this. And to Mr. Tepe's point, we're not just throwing money at a problem, but we've identified a cure, you know, that's sustainable. So that, that's where I'm going with this. I mean, and, and, and again, I don't, I don't want to die on the sword here. Um, and I do want, John, to your notion, these employees are valuable and we need to come to the plate and, and do everything we can. But to simply just throw money at it without having a higher conversation about what this might look like and, and you know, uh, reorganizing, that's what the resolution says. And, and I've not seen that, so. Mr. Onsick? Yes, in the executive session, I presented to you, I passed out my proposal and it showed the difference. It showed their current positions and the new position titles with the new salaries. 
and the resolution spoke of it as a restructuring. That's what I presented to you. I don't know how much more clear I could have been. I gave the new titles, the new salary amounts. That, that is what I presented. <clears throat> yes, Mr. Shepra. Well, okay, but I guess what I took away from that last meeting was a con concern expressed by Mr. Sergis and others as to how that fit into the overall plan that I think, you know, Mr. Tepe has alluded to of not dealing with this on a department by department basis. Is that accurate, Mr. Yes, Sergis? That is accurate. Okay. And I, so for that seemed to me, as I understood it in the discussion I had offline, was that that was the reason for sending this back is to consider it in the light of the broader picture and not as a ad hoc one-off response. And so I guess I would persist in saying, I think it should be sent back to committee for that discussion. Um, if I can remind the board, when we had talked about doing an overarching review of compensation and efficiencies within the, um, uh, to uh, contemplate hiring a consultant to help us with that, the mandated services study, along with combining that with the business study, um, that was postponed. Um, and you wanted to see that at a later date. So if this conversation is what we're having right now about- They need to expedite this portion of that. That, that yeah. particular overarching review um, that is not going to happen most likely until later on this fall. Uh, yes. Is it, is it appropriate to move that this discussion be moved into an executive session this morning? I mean, I don't know where I stand. In I'm getting Hall's very, order, I think that may be. But we're kind of tiptoeing around issues here, and I don't know if it's appropriate to, if, if it's appropriate, well, I, don't think it I want to move that we. Well, you hold that. I, I'd like to hear what Mr. Berman had to say. Ms. Uh, we've got Mr. Sanchez and then Mr. Berman. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Sanchez here. Um, in, in referencing the, the concept of we should be focusing on the, the overarching plan um, as opposed to um, a short-term solution in, in one part of that plan, uh, it's presented as an either-or scenario. I look at it as a both-and. We need to be working on both the big long-term plan for updating all the salary and compensation structures and addressing any short-term immediate needs that are emergent and that do require uh, uh, attention from us more quickly. Um, waiting until the end of fall would not necessarily suit our purpose at this time. And again, I will repeat my comment from earlier that this is just a formalization of the consent that we gave um, in closed session. Okay, Mr. Berman. Berman here. Uh, I think Mr. Omzek's presentation at our finance committee was very clear. I think it, it spoke exactly what he wanted to see happen. So I think questioning that now is, uh, uh, especially by the finance committee members, is uh, not accurate. Davis, with a further comment. Uh, yes, Mr. Davos, and then Mr. Martin. I, I, I don't think I disagree with any of what I've heard, but I think. I, I, Kudos to Mr. Sanchez. I think he expressed it pretty well that uh, this is, you know, we, we do have a, a one-off ad hoc sort of problem that requires some immediate attention, um, but it does give rise to many other questions, as Mr. Tepe pointed out, and, and a, a greater overarching long-term solution is all, you know, of course, something that we want to pursue. Uh, but I think it's safe to say that we should act on what Mr. Anzik has presented to us and take care of the immediate problem right now and then move on to doing the rest and have that portion of it go back to committee. Never happens. I, I agree with, with the last two speakers and I'd like to add to that the fact that um, this in fact is, was presented by Mr. Anzik as a long-term plan for his department. This was not <clears throat> something that how do we patch a hole for today and move on for greater decision-making. This was presented as a long-term restructuring of the finance department. And on that basis, I'm comfortable with moving it ahead today to do exactly what Jarrett said. We need to we need to be judicious in how we handle this stuff. This is one, this is not only a 
an immediate problem with which we're presented. It's also an immediate solution on a long-term basis for one of our departments. So we can put a check mark in and say, okay, finance, now we put to bed, we can deal with other departments as they come up. So <clears throat> I am, as I said, not supportive of sending it back to committee. I'd like to vote on it today and, uh, and move it forward so that we can put this matter to, to bed in a constructive way. Okay, I think we're ready to call the question. Uh, I just, I agree with all that was recently said and, and uh, you know, we're talking about a, a overworked department and uh, I can't remember the last time Mr. Anzik uh, asked for something and strongly encouraged it. So uh, I support moving forward with this. Okay, very good. Um, clerk, uh, could you please call the roll? Point of order, this is for, to send it back then? Because we don't have no, a, no. Uh, we have a we, motion oh, on we have a motion, send it back. motion to send it back, correct. It, Thank you. Based on what I'm hearing, I'll remove that. I'll concur. <clears throat> I'll concur. Okay, very good. Oh my God. We've made progress. <laughs> Verification, we've removed the motion to send it back to committee? That's correct. Right. Oh my Thank God. You. That, that's good. But Madam Chair, I would comment though. Mr. Berman, I don't ever want to be put in a position where I'm made to feel as if I can't ask a question. So if something was asked in, in finance and I'm not satisfied with that answer, I don't want anybody to question or make me feel as if I can't ask that question again or ask for clarity. So, I mean, to, to say that, you know, it was asked and answered last week to move to the next committee and this is the next committee, I am questioning certain things. So I don't know that that's appropriate, but to say it was inappropriate, I, I don't know where I'm supposed to ask the question then. Okay. Thank you. Um, okay, are we ready to call the roll? This is to, uh, you want to read the- uh, Approve the resolution. This is to approve the resolution to move forward to the county board. Correct, correct. Into consent? To consent. Uh, Shepro had asked that it was off consent. Did you still want it off consent at the county? No, board? no, I, I took it off of the today. omnibus vote today when we were gonna vote all four at once. Okay. So on consent. <clears throat> Bates. Yes. Berman. Berman, yes. Ford. Board, yes. Fraz. Yes. Gums. Gums, yes. Kenyon. Yes. Kaya. Kaya's <clears throat> yes. Martin. Martin. Yes. Molina. Yes. Molina, yes. Sanchez. Sanchez, yes. Strathman. Strathman, yes. Sturgis. Sturgis, no. Epi. Epi, no. Davis. Davis, yes. Chepro. No. Kira. Yes. Passes. Passes. All right, before we leave um, the executive, um, there is going to be um, robust conversation, no thoughtful conversation um, regarding the concerns of where payroll should be. Uh, and we're gonna be uh, meeting with finance, Mr. Berman and I, uh, we're going to be, uh, of course, bringing uh, human uh, services together with finance uh, to talk about the modeling. Uh, we will be looking at other counties and seeing how they have done it as well, uh, both pro and con, and then eventually uh, bringing that forward to this committee uh, for your consideration on which way it's going to go. Uh, because historically in the past, um, from what I've been told, uh, that it was indeed in finance, uh, then because of personnel changes and, and gaps in oversight, it was moved to human services and where it is there. Madam now. Chair, you have that reversed. I, that's correct. No, it went from finance to human services. Um, and then because of personnel changes again, uh, it was the stewardship was bent, went back to finance. So that, that is my understanding of how it's been. We'll have all of that documented um, with other research uh, so that we have the facts on the table as we move this forward. Okay. Okay, very good. Um, 
Mr. Berman, finance. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, we have uh, 24 items in the finance. Uh, I'd like to have a motion to approve uh, the 24 on the consent agenda. Caius, move. Third, just second. Uh, if you request to read each of the 24 uh, and select any we'd like to discuss or we just move on the uh, motion. Uh, haven't we, um, excuse me, Caius? Yes, haven't we agreed yes. that we, in exec, we would alliterate each one of the this one through whatever? Yes. Yeah. All right. Beginning with... Uh, you probably combine two through five. Proxy reader. <clears throat> Pardon, Mr. Uh, Prox. Is it, you could probably combine two through five as just budget rollovers. All right. All right. Uh, starting with item one, authorizing a contract for health insurance broker consultant to the tune of $108,000 a year for a two year term. Uh, item two, amending item two, three, four, and five that are amending the fiscal year budget rollover of uh, funds. Item six is the authorization accepting fiscal year 22 NACCHO MRC RISE grant agreement for 75,000. Item seven, authorizing release of general fund contingency budget for new positions filled uh, during the first quarter of the fiscal year of 2022. Six hundred and fifty-four thousand two hundred ninety-one. Item eight: authorize the fiscal year twenty-two budget adjustment <clears throat> to fund completion of the transition audit, thirty-five hundred dollars. Item nine: authorize an additional fiscal year twenty-one year-end allocation-related budget adjustments, uh, seventeen million five hundred forty-eight thousand three hundred ninety-nine dollars. Item 10, authorized reimbursement ARPA fund of payroll expenses for public health and safety personnel responding to COVID-19 public health emergency, reserve of resulting budgetary savings and corresponding fiscal year 21 budget adjustment of $10,464,679. Item 11, ratify an emergency purchase affidavit for the purchase and installation of furniture at the DeKalb Workforce Development Office for $39,273 reimbursed by the U.S. Department of Labor. Item 12, authorizing a contract for King County Asbestos Lead and Mold Consulting Services. Uh, it's an RFP for a, a three-year term. Item 13, authorizing the second contractual contract and extension available for King County Elevator Preventive Maintenance Services uh, $3,436, uh, 35389 for a uh, one-year extension. Uh, item 14, authorizing professional service for consulting and project management for information technology department of $200,000. Item 15, authorizing contracts for security cameras and building access control systems for $750,000. <clears throat> Item 16, authorizing contracts for outdoor wireless installation services, microwave network infrastructure for $150,000. Item 17, authorizing expenditure of funds for computer hardware, software, and service, an annual thing at $900,000. Item 18, authorizing execution of a master intergovernmental cooperative purchase agreement and other documents necessary to participate in a purchase cooperative with AT&T and authorizing the purchase of telecommunications services under said agreement for Kane County, $300,000. Item 19, amendment to the Kane County Code, chapter 19 subdivisions, setting up new fees. Item 20, authorizing a contract for continuum of care support services of $30,000. Item 21, repealing resolution number 16-13 as amended and authorizing the payment of office 
of community reinvestment program expenses yeah, or the general fund working cash in instances where the funding agreements or reimbursements are delayed. <clears throat> 600,000 to 1,200,000. And item 22, amending the vacation policy within the King County Personnel Policy Handbook, uh, having to work with the uh, paid vacation time. And item 23, amendment, County Code Article 6, Division 3, Section 2 221, with respect to cooperative joint purchasing uh, through government agencies. And item 24, approving the 2022 claims paid for February of $6,970,114.45. That completes my uh, agenda items. A lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> All right, any discussion on these items? Uh, I've got to vote no on 23. Okay, you'd like to pull off the consent? <clears throat> Which item was that? Which? Three. Number 23. Number 23, take 23 out. All right, so we're voting on six through uh, 22 and 24. All right. And isn't the, was Mr. Shepard, were you withdrawing? Were you asking the 23 be off agenda? <laughs> off agenda? Or you just uh, it, it may, I may remove it at county board, but in the meantime, <coughs> I'm not removing it today. Okay, so just for a separate. It doesn't have to be okay. removed yeah, from the 24. Removed, no. I guess that's right. If you want to, uh, well, but okay, if you combine it with the others, I'll have to vote no on all of them. Okay. That's all right. Just oh, let's get it done. Why don't we, if you want to, <coughs> why don't you just suggest pulling that one off and that can be voted on separately? Because I, I may, my concerns may be ameliorated before the board meeting, in which case it would remain on consent. So we're voting on one through 24 right now? Yes. That's correct. Okay. And I'm removing sorry. 23. All right. Okay. But if you're going to vote against it, then it's not a consent agenda. No. Well, then none of them are consent agenda. Isn't that the purpose? Of well, no, the, no, we vote. It's a majority vote. It's, it's, a, majority vote. it's a majority vote. The, 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 the executive committee will vote, presumably, you know, with one no vote to put everything on consent. That doesn't take it off consent unless somebody says, I want it off consent. Okay. I'll take your word for it. Yeah. Okay. okay. <laughs> I defer to your expertise. Hmm? Not discuss 23. <coughs> we discuss 23 and no, we don't no. Just, just vote and... because he may change his mind within oh. a week's time. I have to have a discussion with the state's attorney about that. Okay. Good enough. All right, I think we're ready to call the question. Bates, yes, did you say Bates? Bates, yes, yes, Berman, Berman, yes, Ford, Ford, yes, Fraz, yes, Gums. <clears throat> no. Kenyon? Yes. Caius? Caius, yes. Martin? Martin, yes. Molina? Molina, yes. Sanchez? Sanchez, yes. Strathman? Strathman, yes. Sturgis? Yes. Tepe? Tepe, yes. Davis? Davis, yes. Shepro? Shepro, no. You're up. Yes. Yes. It passes. Thank you. Thank you, Dan. I don't know if she heard you. Uh, Ms. Molina, are you ready? Oh, I'm sorry, <laughs> Madam Chair, I didn't hear you. Yes, um, Judicial and Public Safety has two items we'd like to place on consent agenda for next Tuesday's meeting. Um, the first one is proclaiming April 10th through the 16th, National Public Safety Communicators, Telecommunicators Week. And the second is declaring the retirement of K-9 Farrow of the King County Sheriff's Office. Um, we also request both of these, um, I believe, uh, 
uh, our sheriff would like a presentation um, of the retirement, and then we have a proclamation of the um, telecommunicators week. I move both of these. Any discussion? If we vote down number two, does he have to keep working? <laughs> You have to provide sure. treats. <laughs> <laughs> um, a nugget will share. <laughs> a 2% increase in treats. Perhaps speaking, the sheriff's presentation will be at full county board then. Correct. <clears throat> Thank you. I hope we get to see um, uh, Farrow. I hope he's, he's there. Um, I think uh, it'll be a robust uh, uh, meeting because we'll have the 4-H. Uh, yes. Yes, yeah, so we'll have if board members will step forward and volunteer to take them. Yes. All right. That difficulty. Okay. Mr. Ford, you I'll talk to you after the meeting. <laughs> All right, we'll, my name we'll, we'll have what? A... I sent my name. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> have that separately. Um, what are we yes. voting for? I'm sorry. Caius? Yes. This is a to vote these onto consent agenda. Yes, correct. Yes. All right. Uh, if no other discussion, clerk, please call the roll. Bates? Bates, yes. Herman? Herman, yes. Ford? Ford, yes. Braz? Yes. Gums? Gums, yes. Kenyon? Yes. Caius? Caius, yes. Martin? Martin, yes. Molina? Molina, yes. Sanchez? Sanchez, yes. Strathman? Strathman, yes. Sergis? Sergis, yes. Tepe? Tepe, yes. Davis? Davis, yes. Chepro? Chepro, yes. Yes. Passes. Very good. Mr. Teppi. Uh, from public service, Teppi here. I uh, have one, uh, one item to authorize an intergovernmental agreement between the city of Batavia and the county of Kane for administration of raffle licenses. Uh, may I have a motion, please? So moves, moves. Four seconds. Okay. Is there any discussion on these raffle items? Was that Sanchez Ford? Yes. Yes. All right. Sanchez Ford. I think Sir just got in there first. Have it, whatever. <laughs> We're going to defer to each other. So, Sir, okay. Sir, just All right. forward. All right. Ready? Let's, uh, is there any discussion on this item? No. If not, clerk, please call the roll. Bates. Bates, yes. Berman. Berman, yes. Ford. Ford, yes. Braz. Yes. Gums. Gums, yes. Kenyon. Yes. Caius. Caius, yes. Martin. Martin, yes. Molina. Molina, yes. Sanchez. Sanchez, yes. Strathman. Strathman, yes. Sergis? Sergis, yes. Teppi? Teppi, yes. Davis? Davis, yes. Hebro? Present. Pira? Uh, I'll vote. Um, I cannot vote uh, because oh, I'm a resident of Batavia. <laughs> I'm abstaining. All right, Mr. Uh, Foz. <laughs> Um, I'm happy to wrap up our meeting with an unusually light transportation agenda. I have five items and I'll move all five. Chapter That's seconds. Item one. <laughs> Thank you. I'll ask for a second. Um, I'll move uh, item number one. Why do one at a time? And I'm sorry. This approves uh, our adopt the highway applicants. We have Thank two new applicants and seven renewals. Item two approves the purchase of four replacement snowplow attachments. This is with Henderson Products for $67,796. Item three authorizes the application for US DOT RAISE grant. Uh, that's an acronym R-A-I-S-E. And this would help fund certain capital projects that fit the criteria of the grant. Uh, item four approves a contract for construction. This is $5,351,161. This is with Plody Construction. Uh, this is for our, our annual uh, uh, 2022 resur resurfacing projects throughout the county, multiple projects. And finally, item five approves a phase three construction engineering services agreement. <clears throat> this is with V3 companies uh, in the amount of $1,298,176. And this is for the uh, Bliss Main Fabian realignment and intersection improvement project. That's all I have. All excellent projects. Uh, any conversation? Yes. Anybody that wants to run for this office and think that things get done quickly should look at the <laughs> Bliss Road intersection, which yeah. somebody can correct me, but I think it's been almost pending for the entire seven and a half years of my 
<laughs> yeah. Well, we we have a, a we have a brochure, and it's it's called uh, "It Takes Time," and it's you know <laughs> about five years. Um, in, a, in in K dot's defense, we were ready to go last year, but oh, we, we I, had an opportunity for some. Well intended is humor. I I understand about the federal money coming in. We we did wait a year because we had an opportunity for some additional funding, but uh, it's it's a go this this season. And I want to note that Mr. Martin is leaving before completion. <laughs> <laughs> He's and, and I have a euchre date at three o'clock today. <laughs> Caius, yes, and I've, on that note, his part-time job, which I can guarantee you, Mr. Fraz could uh, vouch for the part-timeness of the, the job that he's been doing the last, uh, kudos to him and to the other board members who have their part-time job and do well. I agree. I agree. It's a, it's a, it's a job of great passion. Um, all right, so, uh, clerk, please call the roll if there's Bates. no other discussion. Ms. Bates? Bates. Bates, yes. Herman? Herman, yes. Ford? Ford, yes. Fraz? Yes. Gums? Gums, yes. Kenyon? Yes. Pius? Pius, yes. Martin? Martin, yes. Molina? Molina, yes. Sanchez? Sanchez, yes. Strathman? Strathman, yes. Sturgis? Sturgis, yes. Teppi? yes. Davist? Davist, yes. Tepro? Tepro, yes. 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 Passes. I don't believe we need any executive se uh, sure. session. No, I think we're good. Uh, are there any committee reports? Yes. Here. Uh, Ford. Thank you, Madam Microphone, Chair. please. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, I just want to announce that uh, on April 22nd, after our jobs committee, we are, as of right now, still at attend to have our first roundtable luncheon. I will give you more details at our uh, county board meeting. Good, good. That's excellent. Wonderful. Anybody else? Yes. Just three quick comments. Vern, uh, Jake had reached out to me from yeah. Sergis. Um, Commissioner Tepe, Vern had, uh, uh, Jake reached out to me from the VA, unclear as to where he's supposed to report to for this month. I told him, feel free to report to human down. services, but he's the, the intent is to put that back under personnel. And I just want to acknowledge that phone call and what, whatever's decided is you, you're he, all wonderful people. He would send a notice that he should come to public service. Okay, super. I'll double check. For Perfect. Um, Carl, just a thank you for the emails concerning the, the, uh, situation or, or the possible presentation on Tyrell Road. I appreciated that him and Tom putting that information together. Then I had mentioned earlier, I received an email, I think we all did, regarding the kayak adventure tour. That is, I got to be honest, one of the coolest things I've seen come out of the Forest Preserve. So that's, that is looking. Then, I man, know, man, cool. I am excited for that. So. Tomorrow, the senior stroll. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> that's all, Madam Chair. Uh, yeah, just with a quick one since we're oh, yes, Mr. Davos, you want to go on the kayak adventure as well? <laughs> well, it, just with, with a nod to the, the nature announcement there, I want to take the opportunity on behalf of the Forest Preserve Foundation to remind everybody that you really do need native plants in your life. We've uh, we've sold quite a bit. We're actually in the black, but we're not to the finish line yet. And we want to put up a tower for uh, for Osprey fish hawks to some of you. So buy some plants. Thank you. Where do you buy the plants? When is that? Yeah. Oh, oh, here we oh, go. Where Here's do you buy the plants? Oh. It's, it, you, can go, you can go online to the Forest Preserve District uh, we website and you will find a tab there for uh, uh, that will direct you to it. Plant sale. Okay. Plant sale, Thank yes. Shepro, yes, I just Mr. want Shepro. to point out that the word kayak is a palindrome. <laughs> what? Oh, oh, thank you, Mr. Chair. You can paddle it forwards and backwards. Right. <laughs> Madam Chairman, we, we do have the, the, uh, the uh, young people coming to the next meeting, and we were having a hard time getting uh, volunteers to, to uh, come with the 15 young people. So I don't know what it is now. Yeah. 
Yes. Yeah, can I add to that? Um, also, and I talked with the U of I Center and the luncheon is not at the U of I building, the Extension Center this year for the first time. Oh. They're having the luncheon on the fairgrounds, I think in the new building, and we'll call it the new building. It's maybe 10 years old now. 20 year old new building. <laughs> the 20 year old new building. But just so everybody knows. Chef okay. Rowe, I recall we were advised to respond to the board office. Correct. And I, this, I did. Have you seen the list? No. No, that, that's this morning. Um, okay. I, we'll I will have. Um, I responded to Jane. Jane I, will, yeah. I will have Jane send Jane. out reminders. Yeah, I responded we'll to print Jane. out the list. Slow response is what the problem is. I understand. There's a sense of urgency right now. Um, I know um, you're all part time and. Uh, yeah, part time people. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> Please, uh, uh, if you have any time uh, before the meeting uh, to meet everybody, and that's going to be at 8.30 in the morning downstairs, or is it? That's where they gather and we go pick them up. Okay. And you can take them on a tour of the building. Take them on a tour, give them your wisdom oh, and insights. Or the county board office. Or... The sheriff is usually a real popular one, but yeah, because they want to get, a, get out of free jail card. And it may impact the Forest Preserve District meeting, which it comes right before that. So I think if they'd like to come to the Forest Preserve District meeting, yes. uh, they'd be welcome uh, to do that as well. We don't turn anybody away at the Forest Preserve. Yes, I know. All right. So we'll, uh, we'll keep tabs on all of you and have make some phone calls and um, encourage you to participate. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mr. Canyon moves, we adjourn. Wait a second. I we should notice, oh. notice attendance in person makes the meeting skull better. Shorter. Material. <laughs> Personal attendance. Thank you for that. Um, so, uh, Mr. Shepard, I don't think it's appropriate for you to put words in your associates. Um, I'll speak I'll, for your associate. I'll move. <laughs> <laughs> Here we want, it's before noon. So. <laughs> Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.